2023 has been a wild year. My bank collapsed, Elon bought Twitter, almost all my friends got laid off, all my favorite crypto bros are going to jail, Tesla successfully mated the DeLorean with a Pontiac Aztec, bringing us the Cybertruck, and ChatGPT made me obsolete. But all this good news pales in comparison to the changes web developers have seen in JavaScript land over the last year, where almost every framework decided to reinvent itself in 2023. In today's video, we'll look at 10 recent changes to JavaScript that you may have missed. Every year, new language features get standardized in ECMAScript, at which point they're implemented in browsers. One of my favorite new features this year is Object Group By. Imagine you have an array of objects where the objects share a similar schema. These might be records from a database where every object has a field of age. You can use Group By to separate the children from the adults by defining a function that groups anyone under 21 into children and anyone over that into adults. The end result is an object organized into groups. That's a nice little utility, but one I find myself using even more often is array to sorted, along with to spliced and to reversed. JavaScript already had methods for sort and reversed, but the problem is that they mutate the original array in place. And that's confusing because other methods like map and filter don't do that. Instead, they copy the array and return a new one. With these methods, you can now sort, reverse, and splice an array by treating the original as an immutable value, which tends to be the more sane way to write your code. Web developers also got some cool updates in the form of brand new HTML elements. Like the search tag is a more semantic way to define a search box on a website, which can replace the more generic form tag. That's nice, but the dialog element is way more powerful, which allows you to create actual modal dialogs and then control them with JavaScript, using built-in methods like show modal and close. Another nice utility, but that brings us to index 3. After years of begging and pleading with Apple, iOS finally allows push notifications to come from web apps. And that's a huge win for the 0.0001% of website users who actually allow websites to send them push notifications, which is most likely your grandpa who accidentally clicked the allow button and now has no idea how to turn it off. But now it's time to talk about the fun stuff, frameworks. The world's most popular JavaScript framework, Next.js, is an entirely different framework than it was last year, thanks to the app directory, which became stable in May with version 13.4. The most notable difference is that you can now fetch data directly inside React components, thanks to server components, which are React components that can run on the server. The reception to the app directory has been somewhat mixed. On one hand, it has a lot of awesome new features and can simplify your code, but many have complained about it feeling rushed and half-baked, kind of like the way they launch video games nowadays where they just get something out the door, then patch it up over the next few years. People have complained about having to use the use client directive everywhere due to breaking existing React libraries. People have complained about the slow dev server, which is powered by Rust, which is weird because anything powered by Rust is supposed to be fast. And people have compared its new server actions feature to PHP, one of the most offensive slurs you can make against a JavaScript framework. But the biggest issue is that running Next.js is fairly hard to do correctly outside of Vercel. And that's led to projects like OpenNext that take on the tedious job of getting it to run anywhere. Next is still the dominant meta framework, but Nux.js in the Vue ecosystem also had a lot of cool updates in 2023 like its dev tools. These tools run directly in the browser and make it much easier to understand the structure of a complex application. But one thing you may not know about Nuxt is that many of its components are available through the unified JavaScript tools ecosystem. Like if you don't care about Vue.js and just want a web server, you can use Nitro to build a fast server with plain JavaScript. What's funny is I think the Vue.js ecosystem has changed the least in 2023, and as a consequence, it feels like the most stable and predictable ecosystem. Svelte, on the other hand, got ruined in 2023. In a shocking announcement a couple months ago, Svelte announced a new feature called Runes that will dramatically change the developer experience in version 5. Instead of defining reactive variables with let, there's now this thing called a rune, which is essentially a compiler macro that tells the Svelte compiler this value is reactive. Svelte is also getting rid of the dollar sign colon syntax and stores, with runes like derived and effect. The initial response to these changes were somewhat mixed, with some users feeling like these changes make Svelte look a lot more like React, which is the type of developer experience they're trying to get away from. But on the other hand, a lot of people love these changes and see them as necessary to evolve the framework in the right direction. As a hardcore user of Svelte myself, I'm waiting for the final release of version 5 before I form an opinion. The award for the most changed framework in 2023, though, goes to Angular. It has a long list of new features, but the most notable changes for Angular haters out there would be the new template syntax, which provides a cleaner way to handle conditionals and loops, replacing things like ngif and ng4. In addition, Angular has also adopted signals, much like all the other frameworks out there, and brings a new feature called deferrable views, which enables declarative lazy loading directly in a template. But most importantly, Angular has a brand new logo, which was really the only thing holding it back from being the world's most popular framework in the past. A lot of crazy changes on the front end, but on the back end, Node.js has been quietly getting better. With Node.js version 20, it released a new permissions model, which improves security by controlling which features a script has access to, very much similar to what Dino 
released a few years ago. And then with the release of Node 21, it introduced its own WebSocket client, which is based on the WebSocket API in the browser. The biggest disruptor with backend JavaScript in 2023, though, is Bun. It's a new JavaScript runtime written in Zig that came out with an awesome developer experience and some wild claims about performance. And quite a few bugs were discovered after the initial release, but it still remains a promising new way to do backend JavaScript in the future. And with that, we've looked at 10 different ways JavaScript changed in 2023. But I almost forgot the biggest one of all, HTMX, the framework that showed us that anyone can capture the imagination of the JavaScript ecosystem if you shitpost and meme hard enough on Twitter. But most importantly, as I've shown here with science, HTMX can actually eliminate a ton of JavaScript compared to the status quo approach taken by all the major frameworks. It's the ideal JavaScript framework for the JavaScript haters. And that's why today I'm thrilled and honored to present the HTMX team with the JavaScript Framework of the Year award, which is basically the Nobel Prize of JavaScript. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.